all right good everyone uh, so in this uh, video I'll explain strings lists and loops in Python how do you implement this in Python so first uh, we we'll start with strings so in Python if you want to print a string so you include it in quotes okay like greeting equals hello world then you say print greeting okay so you know in the last class we uh, looked at we looked at uh, variables so there we assigned variables so we said a equals five then we said print a okay that was in the last class so in this uh, today we'll start with strings what if a is a string or a name so usually when people start coding say uh, hello world so print hello world okay in quotes so in python if you want to print a string so you put it in quotes it can be a single quote and it can be a double quote you can say quasu print quasu with single quotes so i need to print quasu okay then we can concatenate string that is we can add two strings together so let's say we say uh, string one equals um quasu and string two equals university so we can concatenate these two we can say print uh string one sorry string string so we can say print string one plus string two okay that is print string one plus string uh, string two so it will print quasu university okay so where well, you can create is a space in between you can say space equals okay so that there will be a space so then you say string one plus space plus string two so that will be quasu university so that is our strings in python then if you have a string that extends more than a line okay so you can do two things firstly you can use uh, this symbol this uh, backslash or better still you put it in parenthesis okay so everything that you put in parenthesis so let's say a uh, print um, quasu is a word class university located in Malete Kuala State Kuala State Nigeria okay so you can print this so I have to put the sorry Nigeria is it hanging let's start again print quasu a string quasu is a world class university it is located in Nigeria okay oh we didn't close the string okay so let's go the string then print okay so it can you can have you can continue the sentence so Python will just uh, break it uh, appropriately okay so that's about uh, strings that extend uh, more than a line so you can continue typing but make sure you use the um, uh, parenthesis and the quotes okay both of them must be there. the parenthesis and the quotes whether single quote or double quotes okay indexing and slicing in strings so if we say um, maybe a equals quasu as a string I want to print only the W or let's say string 5 equals quasu or just as yeah string 5 equals quasu so we want to print just k so we can say print 
str5 0 we want to print k so python indexing starts from 0 okay so this k holds position 0 the position is w uh, the location is 0 w position is 1 a position is 2 s position is 3 u position is 4 so if you want to print k you say print str5 then in um, bracket that's a square bracket zero so here it will print k so if you want it to print a then you, you know i told you this k so let me write it somewhere so the k is zero okay w the location is one then a the, the location is two a is two s is three and u is four okay so if you want to access w you use zero one that is one so if you put one here you get w so that's how to access a string what if you want to print you want to access was that is string zero string zero uh, k is zero w is one so you want to access string one and a which is two and s which is three so how do you do so you say print <coughs> str5 so you start from the one that you want the the location which is w you want to print so let me write here to print to print w a s so that is our goal how do we print w a s so you access w because you you note that k is zero w is one so you say print one of two w is one a is two s is three you now add one to it four so if you if you say print one colon four it will print w a s okay w a s so what if you want to access a s u okay so let me write that again so print a s u how will you do that so you say print print the str5 a s u so what is a a is at location 2 so 0 1 2 okay then so 2 3 4 so 2 to 4 but you have to add 1 so that will be 5 so if you do this if you do this it will print a s u so that is about indexing and slicing in python okay so next python lists and topos python lists and topos so you can create a python list uh, let's say you need number 1 to 10 one way is to say uh, ls1 that is list 1 equals 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that's a list okay so if you say print ls1 so it will print the list 1 to 10 okay but python has a built-in function called range we can use the range to generate these numbers 1 to 10 okay so we can say uh, ls2 equals range so if we say range range you need the starting point the starting point here is 1 and an end point so 10 but you'll see i'll explain why uh, i'll explain this last this 10 i'll explain that very shortly so let's print uh, ls2 so you have range 1 to 10 so but i have to list it so print list ls2 so it will print 1 to 9 okay so if you need 1 to 10 you have to put 11 so if you need this range 1 to 10 you have to put range 1 comma 11 so it will print 1 to 10 so python starts indexing from 0 and ends at n minus 1 okay it starts from 0 and ends at n minus 1 so if you need a list of uh, 0 to 20 or 1 to 20, you just put 21. So it will print 1 to 20. 
what if you need 1 to 20 or 1 to 50 in steps of 5 1 to 50 in steps of 5 so let's put 51 so that to print 1 plus 5 6 6 plus 5 11, 11 up to 46 okay so you can this last step so the first number here so when you are, when you are using range the first number is the starting point the second number is the end point and the third is the spacing so if there is no third number so python will assume that the spacing is one okay so to print one up to 50. so if you need the spacing to be two then you use one you use two so to be one three five seven and so on in fact you can use this idea to print even numbers and odd numbers maybe between one and fifty so if you want to print odd numbers like this is what you have done you want to print even number so you can change this to two you start from two okay you start from two and maybe stop at 52 so to print all the odd num all the even numbers between two and 50 okay so that is a way to you are to create a list now python can it is not compulsory that the list created by python has the same number type what we have used there we have used integers only we can create another list list 3 equals that will have integers i'll have floating point number that will have a string a string that's a question okay so we can have all manners of uh, all the types of numbers that are acceptable in python let's say 78 and so on and we can say print ls3 okay so to print all the numbers okay to print that now what about you want to access so let's let's get a simple string let's take this ls1 this ls1 is just 1 to 10 just 1 to 10 i want to access 4 so if you want to access 4 you say print ls1 the way we access uh, for the for the for the strings okay that i explained above so you want to access this number four again python index starts from zero so this one will be zero this will be one two three so you want to access four you put three in here so that you access four you want to access nine this will be zero one two three four five six seven eight so you, you put print list eight so that will print nine okay that is about uh indexing uh of uh lists now if again if you want to access a range of numbers it's similar to what we did for uh for strings now what if you want to reverse a list we have list one so let me let me print print ls1 again ls1 this is ls1 now we now want to ls1 start from one and stops as 10. We now want a situation whereby we want to start the number from 10 and stop at 1. So that will be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So what we just do is this. Okay. So we we'll print this. So that will be print. Sorry, ls1. Sorry, what did I? It should be the minus 1. So it will reverse it print the number then colon colon minus one so to reverse so this one to ten to ten to one so because sometimes you need to start from the highest number and move to the lowest number so in that case if you have your list so all you need to do is to uh access or to reverse it so if you want to reverse it this is what you do so reverse a list so this is how you reverse a list in python okay all right what is next so you should read about there are many things uh but you can do about lists so please read about extend index insert pop reverse remove sort and so on let me talk about append let's say we have created our ls1 so print ls1 and we want to add another number after this 10 so we can say ls1 dot append let's say we want to append 20 okay then we'll now say print ls1 so ls1 now has 20 
added sorry let me print this again uh, let me ls1 sorry i have to start from the beginning because i've already added so that's ls1 then print ls1 dot append 20 Okay. So let me write the list again. So you have ls1 equals 1 to 10 Then print ls1. So let's have our list again. Then so if you want to append a number to ls1. So you say ls1 dot append You want to append 20 then print ls1 So you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then 20 so that is about append. So append means add to the last uh, list, the last element of the list. So these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 20, they are the elements of the list LS1. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the difference between list and tuples? They are very, very similar. The only difference is that for list, so let me write LS1 again. So print LS1. So this is a list 1 to 20 now for list we can change the element of a list for tuples we cannot change the element of tuples okay for example this is ls1 we can change we can say um we can say we want to change this uh, this 3 to 50 so we say ls1 of you know, 3 is 1 is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So 1 ls1 of 2. We want to change it to 50. Then print ls1. Okay, so it, it, it has changed this 3 to 50. So we can do that for a list. Now, for a list, we separate the numbers by commas. Okay, uh, what did yeah. So here, yeah. so yeah, we use square brackets. I will separate the numbers by comma so one comma two comma three comma four and so on and so forth now if you want to create a tuple so for a tuple for a tuple we can do the same thing we can say tuple let's say t1 equals we use parentheses in this case so one comma two comma five comma eight comma nine comma twenty and so on so you can say print t1 okay so the difference between the, the a tuple and a list is that uh, a top a list is mutable while a tuple is immutable. That is, you cannot change the element. Look at what we did here. We changed the element at location two to fifty. If we try the same thing for a tuple, if we say t one of two, okay, equals uh, maybe seventy, we are going to get an error. So print t one. We are going to get an error okay why they say tuple object does not support item assignment so because you cannot change the element of a tuple so if you need a code whereby you don't want uh, you don't want to tamper with the arrays or the, with the list that you have then you should use the tuple so instead of using a uh, square bracket you use what a parenthesis parenthesis so this is what you use so that's the difference between a list and a tuple so a tuple is immutable it's an immutable list okay so you cannot change the elements of a top okay lastly for loops for loops loops generally in python so uh and python uses for loops and how do you do that so let's say you have this fruits fruit list you have apple as a string melon string banana string orange string forming a list so this fruit list is this is a list of fruits we can say for i in fruit list print i that is i will now start from the if it will look at this fruit list okay the first one is apple so it will start from the first one which is apple it will print apple then goes to the next one melon then banana then orange okay so that is dealing with uh, strings with for loop now but in uh, in science and engineering we often deal with numerics with numbers 
So let's say we want we have uh, numbers from zero to nineteen. I want to print the, the square of the numbers. Uh, we have numbers from zero to nineteen. I want to print the square of the numbers. Okay. So uh, x equals x squared. So I want to square it. So we want to find x x squared. So we can just say for i in range twenty, print i squared. So that is the range will start from zero. You know, Python range starts from zero if there is no, if, if you have not included a number. So you know when I explained range, I said the first number for a range. So let's say y equals range again. So if you put well, just one number, twenty, so Python will will print this y. So Python will print from zero up to twenty nine, okay. But if you have so let me say if you have y equals this and you start from two or four, so Python will start from four and stops at twenty nine, you know, n minus one. But if you have three numbers in the list, maybe the first number let's say zero, the last number and the spacing let's say two, so it will print zero, two, four, six, eight up to what twenty. So you should take note about python range even though uh, when you do when we do research we do not often use range okay but we'll get to uh, the usage of numpy later so usually we use a range which is uh, the array form of range but we'll get to that uh, maybe in subsequent uh, lectures all right so you want to print the score of, of uh, a list of numbers from 0 to 19. So you can just say for i in range 20. So that will be, to start from 0, it will print the score of 0, which is 0. Then you go to 1, print the score of 1, print the score of 2, the score of 3, the score of 4, up to the square of 19. But this is not a Pythonic way of doing it. A Pythonic way of doing it is to say i square y equals as a list i square for i in range 20 so this is a pythonic way this is faster okay so if you use this method it is faster it's really for heavy uh computation so i strongly recommend that you use the pythonic way of uh for loop so let's look at a, phys a simple uh physics example we solved this example in the previous uh class so we had y of t equals v naught t minus half gt square so v naught is initial uh, speed t is the time g is succession to gravity so the values are given here now in the last class we were asked to find y of t when t equals i think 0 0.5 or so but in this case we want to find the values of y when t is a list that is 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 1.0 0, and so on so if I, we can create the list so g again is 9.8 v naught is 10 it's given as 10 meters per second and the pi the t list the time list is 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 0 0.5 and 1.1 okay so how do we now print the values of y at the different times okay at time t equals 0 0.1 so what you do is you put in the formula v naught times t minus 0 0.5 times g times t squared then i say for t in tv for t that is this t in the list let me use t list i think it's better t list that is the list of time t list then you cannot say you cannot print the values of t uh, the values of y at a specific t so i have formatted it and you have when t is 0 0.1 y of t is 0 0.951 meters when t is 0 0.2 seconds y of t is one point and so on and so forth okay so this is a way to um, uh, obtain the values of y of t for the different values of t. If you use the, the method we used in last class, let me see. So in the last class, we had this, okay? We are, we are asked to find the y of 20 equals 0 0.5. If you try to use the same method, let me just copy and paste here um paste here so and i now have my t which is now a list 
So T instead of 0 0.5 is not a list. If you try to do this, you are going to get an error. Okay? You're going to get an error. Because Python does not... So this T is not a list. And this Python only takes in a single number, not a list. But the solution to this, if you want to, is to, is to use NumPy. But we'll get to that shortly. We'll get to that shortly. So let me delete this. All right. So that's about our for loop. So if you want to use for loop to uh, create a list, so you write the formula. Okay. Then you say for t, that is for the number that is changing. If it is t that is changing, then you put t. In some cases, we can change the velocity, the initial velocity or the initial speed. This v naught. If the initial speed changes. Then you say for v not in v not list. So you first create the list for v not. But here we have created the list for t. So t list. So if v not changes, then you create the list for v not. Then you write the formula that you say for v in v not list. So then you print <coughs> your result. All right. Control flow in Python. So the f the if statement in python if l if l statement so i think we've looked at this before but let me just uh revisit it again so if then the statement the statement first statement then you put colon then you enter then you put statement let me let me tell you what i mean we say for x in range 10 what does this mean it means for x in 0 1 2 3 4 up to 9 so if <coughs> x is less or equal to 3 so if x is less or equal to 3 print x is less than or equal to 3 and if that is else if s is greater than 5 then print x is greater than 5 else that is every other if x is not less than or equal to 3 and x is greater than 5 then it means that it means x must be what 4 or 5 okay so if you if you print this so Python will start from x equals zero. You know, I told you this would print x equals it will start from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So when so the first number to check is zero. If x is less or equal to three, it means zero is less than three. So this is true. Then it means the number is less than or equal to three. So to print zero is less than or equal to three. Then the next one, else if x is greater than 5. So this one, it's also less than 3. 2 is also less than or equal to 3. 3 is less than or equal to 3. You know, less than or equal to means it can be less than or equal to. But when it gets to 4, it does not satisfy this condition. So it will move to this place. Else if x is greater than 5. Okay? But this number 4 is not greater than 5. Then Python now say else, that is, so since it has not satisfied these first two conditions, so it means it will satisfy the last one. So which is print x must be 4 or 5. We can use this to print even numbers and odd numbers. And I think I think we did that in our last class. So let's say um, write so let's say write a code to print even and odd numbers. So how do we do that? So what we do is, let's say we have the number, I don't know, x equals maybe 5. Then when I say if x percent 2, that is, if you divide x by 2, and the remainder is 0. You know, we have, we have this is the remainder symbol. And the remainder is 0. If x percent 2 equals 0, then, then print x uh, print the number or uh, what is the number okay so there we can, let's just say print the number is even okay else you know there are two conditions it can either be even or odd so else print the number is odd 
Okay. A number can be even or odd. So, so those are the two um, conditions. So, if there is no other condition, then you can use else. But if there are more conditions, then you use uh, L if. L if. Okay. So, let's now print this. The number is odd because 5 is odd. What about 6? The number is even. 6 is even. Okay. So, we have looked at the remainder symbol in our last class. So, if you have forgotten about it, so you can watch the video again. Then, so we, we check the condition that if x percent 2 equals equals 0, that is, if you divide x by 2 and the remainder is 0, it means the number is even. But if there is a remainder, if there is a remainder, it means the number is what? It's odd. So I think that is... Uh, okay, so let, let's take a look at another one. Uh, print, write a code. Write a code to print uh, positive, negative, and zero. Okay. Positive, negative. So here we have three cases. You know, the number can be positive or negative or zero. So let's start from x equals seven. So we now say if x is greater than zero, then print the number is positive. Print the number is positive and if mm -hmm, because we have uh, more than two cases here so and if x is less than zero then print x the number the number is negative what's the third condition there's only one option left else then I say print the number is zero. The number is zero. Okay, so let's run this. So the number is positive because seven is positive. What about minus seven? The number is negative. What about zero? The number is zero. Okay, so this is how you use if statements in Python. Okay, so if then the condition, then you put colon. So please don't forget this column because students often forget this column. Then when you include the column, then there must be a tab. That is four spaces. One, two, three, four. Or you just use a tab, but you must be consistent. If I using four spaces, use four spaces. If I using a tab, use a tab. Okay? Then if the first condition is not satisfied, it will go to the second condition. If it's also not satisfied, then it will go to the last option, else. So for this case, it's not compulsory to use else. Okay, you can still say L. If uh -huh, x equals equals zero, then print the number is zero. You get the same thing. Okay? So I think for beginners, I would recommend that you use this L if throughout. Okay, but if you know what you are doing very well and there is only the last option left, then you can use else. Okay, for to print the last. Okay, so this is the another example. An example, the chronicle delta, delta ij, it is defined as one if i equals j. And it, it, it is defined as zero if i is not equal to j. Okay, so in Python, how do you write the code, Python code, to output the chronicle delta function? So you say if i equals equals j, delta is one. Okay, if i equals equals j, delta i j equals one. And if i is not equals, you know, we have looked at this before, not equal. So if i is not equal to j, then delta is what? Zero. So zero. Then print delta equals delta. So in this first, this example, i is 1, j is 2. So they are not equal. So we, we expect that we'll, we'll get what? 0. But if you print 2, 2, then we'll get what? 1. So this is a chronicle delta. So it's, it also shows how you use your if statements. So lastly, the while loop. So we have learned how to use the for loop. We have learned how to use the if statement. Then lastly, we'll, we'll look at uh, the while loop. What is the difference between the while loop and the for loop? So the while loop, it will continue to run until a, a particular condition is satisfied. So let's say we want to print numbers 1 to 10. We initiate. So usually you initiate, you initiate in a, while using while loop. So i equals a, then you say while i is less than 10, increase i by 1. So original i is what? 0. Increase by one, so it means i equals zero plus one, which is one. Then print i. 
that is print one so it's a print one okay then it will now go again it's i less is one less than ten one is still less than ten so it will add one to it two print two two is still less than ten and so on until it gets to ten when it gets to ten it will look at the condition again ten less than ten ten less than ten is not true so python will stop okay so it stop at what at ten but if you do not add this i plus one eh, if you mistakenly mute this i plus one this code will continue to run forever because i is always less than zero so the code will continue to print zero 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 okay so a way to stop to truncate the iteration is to increase the i okay say so i equals i plus one so then print the next one or i plus two it depends it depends on what you want so but in this case we want to print one to ten okay that is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and so on so we print uh, we use uh, this code what if you want to print two four six eight ten in this case it will be i equals i plus two so you'll be adding two so that it will print uh, two four six eight ten so on okay so this is where uh, we stop today so see you in the next class